Hello fellow hunters, this is Ascend from the Ascend X7 channel at twitch.tv slash Ascend X7. So I wanted to clarify what is a very common question for me, and this pertains to the skill trees. Now we typically use skills and perks interchangeably, however, in Call of the Wild, uh, they're two separate categories. So let's focus today on skills. You have the stalker and then you have the ambusher tree. The most common question I get is, you know, should I level up the stalker first, then ambusher? Is ambusher better than stalker? To me, the answer is um, neither is better than, there's neither one better than the other. They're really there to complement how, how you play the game. You only get a total of 22 points. So once you max out at level 60, you only have... Uh, a total of 22 points to invest in between these two trees. So what that means, you have to choose very wisely. Luckily, you can reset your skills. So for me right now, it would cost like $49,000 to reset my skills. Um, I've actually done that numerous times just to test out various things. It's a good thing to know, but again, it's very expensive to do. So choose wisely. So let's kind of break down tier um, zero through four in uh, Stalker for a moment. Tier zero basically helps you track your animals more easily, especially once you've wounded them. The tracking cone, uh, two of the three perks here, decreases the size of your tracking cone. So I find it beneficial. Um, also, um, there gets to be a point once you get further in your tree, you actually just have to spend perks uh, points in the tree just to open up other things so I went ahead and invested all all three perk points in in this tier zero and tier one track knowledge I mean this this is really kind of helping you decide you know is this track I see here worth um, worth actually following so you know animals gender uh, proximate animal group size um, you can see animal health, that isn't too big of a deal for me. And then the last one reveals information about the animal's approximate weight. And then finally fur type, um, that, that actually jumps over to this perk, where if you have the um, level three in tier one for track knowledge, uh, you can utilize tier four disturbed vegetation to decide whether, or determine whether or not you're tracking a piebald, a melostatic, you know, just, some type of rare animal so I, I went ahead and maxed out in this section it's not it's not really necessary you don't have to have this but again I chose to to do so since again I have to uh, I think it's like 13 points invested in this tree here just to get to where I can spend something on tier 4 so to me it's worth it the must-haves in this section to me is uh, I'm only happy when it rains. So here, foggy and rainy weather, you become less visible. So to me, anything that makes you less visible or less noisy is a must, which jumps you over to soft feet, reduce noise uh, moving through foliage and through larger vegetation, which is um, level one and level two of this. It's a must, it really is a must. And I have countless times I've benefited from this perk to sneak up just a little bit closer you know on a nice animal so to me this is a must um, back over in tier one I mean yeah 15% increased health I mean I don't think it's worth it I really don't think it's worth it for the benefit because again these get you closer to animals these get you kills these get you trophies this just I mean it doesn't do a whole lot for me so I, I don't invest in connect the dots. It's really good though if you have trouble tracking an animal because you know sometimes they just go round and round and you never know 100% uh, of the time if the next track you're looking at is in sequence. So this helps you determine if the animal's track that you're connecting to or looking at next is in sequence. In other words, is this a track that was left earlier? Was this a track left later? You know. So and again, the connect the dots is nice. But you only have, again, 22 points. So for me, it, it just wasn't worth it. Weather prediction, um, I mean, it's great, I guess. But again, 22 points, why do I need to use that? What Use a point on something that's probably not really gonna help me get a bigger animal. So I skipped that one. Um, innate uh, triangulation, 
I only only got this one because I needed to spend one more point to get over here. I mean, it's all fine and good, and I know that you know the smaller the vocalization um, indicator is, the better you can pinpoint it. But it it really doesn't help me that much. But again, I had to spend a point to get here, so I chose this because at least it will help me out a little bit. Uh, improvised blind is a godsend. This is for me the only perk that is absolutely mandatory 100 percent mandatory these two really should be but this is mandatory you can basically become invisible anywhere on the map that you have vegetation that will overhang you and of course you'll be able to to figure that out so to me this is mandatory uh, endurance is nice because again holding your breath and running if you do that fairly frequently it's nice to have it build up quickly but again I got this just mainly because I wanted to be able to experiment with the disturbed vegetation so it's not mandatory excuse me but it will it'll definitely help you out ambusher alright so ambusher I only and I say only only invested eight points here um, there's not a lot in here that I absolutely love so I use scent uh, a lot the lures uh, I use it a lot so I went ahead and invested four points in tier zero because again um, it increases uh, the number of uses per can which saves you money two I mean it increases duration that's great three level three is the range uh, level four is increases the attraction chance so to me it takes a, a lure like a scent lure is okay it's not great in the game but at the same time, what I've noticed is um, using the scent lure will get the animals just a little bit closer to you. Uh, so I love them. So anything that makes them more effective, I was I was very uh, um, I'm very high on. Uh, tier one uh, spotting knowledge. One reveals information about the health. I never pay attention to it, but I had to get it. Uh, two reveals information about the trophy rating. So that that was the one I was actually interested in. So I needed to know what the animal I'm looking at, just an estimate, is it a silver, is it a gold, is it a diamond, is it worth my time um, looking at. A lot of people like um, level 3, reveal, um, reveals information about you know the animal, how aware they are for nearby threats. That's really good in multiplayer uh, if you're helping someone else hunt, um, but for me personally it just wasn't worth getting. Add a random chance of attracting an animal that is usually not attracted to scent. So Dazed and Confused, it works. I mean, you'll get like random animals coming in. Um, this was just a personal decision this time because I usually have that. I just didn't have enough points to go around, so I didn't get it this time. But you will get very random animals coming in. Um, the more the merrier. 5% increase on... on uh, on monetary reward just wasn't worth it to me uh, impact resistance again so so what you know if you fall and you don't die what's you know what's the big deal considering that's not going to help you you know kill a trophy animal so I ignored that one uh, this one I I mean it to me it's a no-brainer calls in the game are um, are absolutely amazing they're a must you got to use them so if something makes it better then why the heck not? And then in this particular situation, sight spotting, I went ahead and, and opted for that. Um, I do use my binoculars a lot, but every once in a while you'll catch a glimpse of something while you're looking through your scope. So it's nice here to get an idea before you shoot one animal, if you see another one, you know, is this a better, you know, a better trophy potential? So I went ahead and opted for that. Once you get over in, in tier three like tag I actually don't use the trace outline at all I don't like it it breaks my immersion in the game so I completely ignore that uh, adds a random chance when you're looking at whose deer uh, attract the species that is usually not attracted this again even more so than the scent uh, whose deer really works I mean I'm not even kidding this is actually a really cool perk and I may end up um, swapping things a little bit later and adding it back I mean, I'll, I, yesterday was a great example. I used the elk call, called in a herd of elk, called in a moose, called in deer, called in a coyote. Granted, I was there for a good while. I was trying to bring in a really nice trophy uh, elk, a bull. But by the time I was done, um, I had darn near every species on the map. 
I even had, and no joke, I even had a bear run by. Um, but I, I ended up with um, elk, moose, and deer laying around me using this perk. So it definitely works. Um, pack mule, you get, you basically you get like three pounds of extra carry space without having a back, uh, you know, like a backpack on. I mean, it's nice, but does it really help you kill anything? Does it help you get a better, a better animal? I don't think so. So I don't use it. I don't keen. I mean, I don't even get this far over in the tree. You don't have enough points to really spend to get over in here. So this may be great, but I just, I just, it's not worth it for me to lose out on all the other perks and stalker just so I can get over here. The same is true. Increase the attraction range um, of all colors when used within 10 meters of a lookout point. I mean, who cares? I mean, I'm not trying to be mean, but who cares? Like you're not camping around those all the time. So to me, it's it's a useless perk. Um, and then decreasing the cost by 5% a haggle. Again, who cares? It doesn't help you get trophy animals. So for me, the way I look at it personally, what is going to help me kill more animals? What is going to help me get better animals? And what what is fluff? You know, kind of fluff things in the game. And I think there's a lot of fluff things once you get to tier 3 and tier 4 in both categories. That being said, my suggestion to everyone is really look through really look through the skills, decide what matches up to your play style and select it. And for me, again, the only things that I really think are mandatory is again, definitely improvise blind. Also really consider the ones that make you um, less noisy, less visible. And then anything that makes your scent or your call better, I really think that, I mean, it's just to me kind of like a no brainer. Those make you more effective. So thank you for listening. I know that was a long winded ramble, um, but again, you know, the skills in this game, they're going to determine how successful you are. And again, you only get 22 of them. So you have to invest them wisely. My recommendation is invest them where it's going to make the most impact for you. And for me, the impact comes in better calls, better sense, decreased visibility, decreased noise. So again, thank you very much for checking out this video. If you um, like what you heard, want to hear more, please hit the subscribe button. If you would like to watch one of our broadcasts, um, we pretty much, it's like six, seven days a week or over on Twitch, um, eight to 10 hours a day, playing mostly the Hunter Call the Wop. So that's twitch.tv slash ascendx7. Again, stop over there, give the cool kids table a try. And again, thank you so much for checking out the video and I uh, hope you have an amazing time hunting. Bless you all.